Hey everyone, Thought Steve here with Team 3683, Team Dave. And we gotta check out this amazing robot. They have an extension on their on their robot with an amazing dual game piece intake as well as an angled elevator. Really excited to look through the robot here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first team experience and offers high quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. All right, Stefan, talk me through your robot. Your, talk me through your intake. It seems like you can do two, both game pieces. Tell me more about it. Yeah, so our intake, um, you'll notice that there's a lot of 3D print parts. And we decided to use 3D prints to um, primarily because these parts are pretty customizable. And aluminum was just like not going to cut it in terms of customizability. It also makes it a lot lighter. And um, it's just more simple to 3D print. We use Lexan on the sides, that improves the uh, flexibility of the intake, right? So if you have something really rigid, it's more likely to break. And we add strut bars in the middle made out of aluminum to increase the rigidity and decrease the likelihood of the intake skewing. One cool thing is that both these rollers are controlled by one motor. So if you look on the right side here, you'll see that this Neo uh, uses a reversing gearbox to reverse the direction of both these rollers. We have a wrist on this side. Um, it uses a chain for rigidity and is driven by one Neo in the back there. And uh, yeah, this is the intake. Can we uh, see a demonstration with a couple of game pieces on how your intake functions and, and walk me through that? Yeah, absolutely. So these front two rollers pick up the cone by the flange. So what we do is we just drive into them and then it sucks them up. So with the cone, do, are you guys only doing the edge or do you also do the nozzle as well? So um, the gap here is mainly just for the edge, so the flange, and we have the most success with that. In like some strange scenarios, we may be able to intake the tip of it as well, but that is not usually what we plan to do. All right, and I assume with the cube, it's able just to squeeze right in here? Uh, that's correct. So the way we do that is we um, simply just um, spin the rollers the opposite way. Well, thank you, Anthony and Stefan, to tell me more about your intake. But now let's give it to Stefano. Tell me more about your extension. That we, we saw a little bit about that, but tell me more about that. So, this is called the linear extension. It's a belt-driven um, 3D part. Um, it's ran by one Neo in the back. And it's, we have multiple bearing blocks on the sides and on top to drive our Linux up front. Here we have a tensioner to keep our belt tensioned at all times. And we have a Hall effect sensor in the back to detect when we are all the way back in our Linux. The Linux is made of a box tube and just a 3D printed part. Um, one cool thing about our Linux is we use carbon fiber rods as tensioners to keep it upright. Carbon fiber has high tensile strength, so it's better than aluminum and it, it's, it saves on weight. Also, we used aluminum rod ends instead of steel to save on weight. We also 3D printed parts to hold aluminum rod ends instead of aluminum. Uh, that's our Linux. Your extension is really, really smooth and it, it just glides across really nicely. Now let's head into about your elevator. Uh, Daniel, tell me more about your elevator. It's at an angle. How has that work? How well has that worked for you guys? Uh, so yeah, we chose to do an elevator archetype compared to the uh, arm archetype that a lot of, te a lot of other teams use. Um, yeah, it's at an angle as most elevators are. Um, it's a two-stage cascading elevator that's powered by the two neos on max planetaries in this gearbox right here. Uh, the two neos on max planetaries basically drive the two pulleys here. Um, that's clamped on the second stage. I have these belt clamps here, and that just rides along there. And the carriage is riding along the nylon strap there. Uh, I think Anthony's gonna give a demonstration there, but um, yeah. 
It's basically the nylon strap is clamped onto the carriage. This guy's getting elevated. Uh, so it just goes up like that. Um, it's a lot easier to control in software as well, which is a big reason why we did it. And Dave's just mainly known for using elevators in the past as well. Now, this elevator is so, so smooth. So I want to hand it to you, Anthony. You spoke a little bit about your intake, but now tell me more about with your extension, with your elevator. It's so smooth. How well is your presets as well? Yeah, so um, the way we got our smoothness is we just spent a long time tuning the elevator and the, our linear extension. So we just spent a long time, and it just works better if we have the correct um, constants for our PID. Um, the way we have our presets created is we have some set points that we tell our um, elevator and linear extension to go to and then we generate a S-curve based on like the points to smoothly um, go to those points and also account for acceleration and jerk. Can you show us a bit more of those presets that you guys have on the elevator? Um, one of the presets that we have is our cone intaking high. So just press a button and that just goes up. Oh, sorry. It's a uh, cone scoring. So that's cone scoring high. And what that does is it moves it up above the pole and then we use the pole to basically, um, uh, I guess, rip it out of our intake. So the way that works um, is like we basically just have like a loose grip on it and then it just like pulls it off. And this way we don't need to like um, we don't need to do very specific timings on like when to shoot the cone out of our intake. So it's just one less point of failure. So with, you just showed us a preset and it was so fast and so smooth. How fast are your cycle times with how fast your presets are? Yeah, so um, our cycle times are pretty fast. If we are undefended, we can usually do um, 12 cycles in one game, wow. not including our auto. So that's if like the field is completely empty and there's no other robots with us. <laughs> uh, when we're getting defended or when we're playing around other robots, the time can vary. But usually we're pretty consistent um, doing eight or nine cycles. Team Dave, our top 24 team on FRC top 25. Congratulations on the great success you guys have had. Really excited to see what you guys will do tomorrow for Alliance selection. And good luck in playoffs tomorrow and good luck with the rest of the event. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.